Hey guys, welcome back to the Tea Party Podcast. It's the podcast where you find new friends and new music. And this week I'm joined by an up-and-coming country artist who Next Women of Country called a natural fit for country music. I'm talking about Lauren James. And Lauren, thanks for jumping on here with us. Yes, thank you. How are you? I am doing fantastic, or as much as I can be. I've been stuck in my house mm-hmm. for three days now, so I'm starting <laughs> to go a little stir-crazy. Yeah, same. So before we get too far into this, let's kind of give everybody the Lauren James backstory. Kind of give us the Wikipedia version of, of growing up. Yeah, so I actually grew up in a musical household. Um, my father was a touring musician in South America as a missionary for a few years. Um, so I've always been surrounded by, by music. Um and I wanted to do it as a career until I moved to New York City um, and pursuing country music. So what was it that kind of pushed you towards country music? So I've always um, loved writing and, and playing and singing, but it was always more of a hobby to me. And then when I met my fiancé in New York, um, I think we had dated – for about a year before I played anything for him. But when I did, he was like, oh, my God, you have to be doing this. Why aren't you doing this? So um, I also I like to write my songs in sort of a storytelling kind of a thing, which which fits really well with country music. I love storytelling. So I guess that's how I, I started getting on stage. And music, and now I'm coming out with my first video, which I'm super excited about. Well, yeah, and and we'll get uh, we'll talk about that. Um, you've got you know a brand new song coming out, as well as your debut music video. But when you talk about you know the reason that you got into country music, and then also you know moving to New York, that's kind of an interesting uh, place to move as a country artist. It's not something that I think a lot of people recognize as like a, a country music hotspot. But it seems like more right. and more there's more artists coming out. Um, of New York and kind of coming up in New York. And it seems like it's kind of got its own little scene there now. Yeah, it really does. Um, Especially as well, it's so close, um, you know, to New Jersey, which I know has a really big um, country music market. Um, But yeah, it is gaining popularity in New York, especially I feel like in Brooklyn. Um, Kind of more of an indie singer, songwriter, um, like country folk kind of movement over there. So, yeah, it's definitely a lot more accepted now, um, and there are definitely a handful of artists that are coming out and producing great music in New York City. So, and we talked about it a little bit being kind of cooped up in in our houses, just because that seems like what everybody's doing right now with all of the uh, the coronavirus stuff that's going on. But from what I've seen, New York City is a little bit of a, uh, a ghost town. How much has that affected what you have going on, especially with the launch of a new song coming up? Yes, um, it is definitely a ghost town. It's very weird since New York is such a busy, bustling place. But, um, yeah, I was supposed to actually play the New Jersey Folk Festival next month, and I was going to do a live debut of the song, but it actually got canceled. Oh, no. So, yeah, I know a lot of musicians are dealing with, um, you know, tours getting canceled and festivals all over the place. So it's very... Very strange time right now. Uh, it most certainly is. And as you're putting out this music, I mean, is it something where you, you're you seeing a little bit more traction because it's the only way that people can find new music right now is is when artists like yourself kind of put it out? Or have you, have you noticed any difference there in, in fan reaction? Yeah, I think so. Um, since people are cooped up, they're definitely listening to more music. I've seen a lot of artists doing um, kind of Instagram live shows, and going on certain platforms so that they can do, you know, living room shows, essentially, um, since the touring has been canceled. So considering maybe doing something like that um, a little closer to the release. But, yeah, we'll see. Well, and I've I've seen around that you've been kind of uh, labeled as an introvert, which is something that's a little mm-hmm. bit interesting um, for a country music artist. And you even said yourself that, it took you a while before you were able to play in front of uh, your fiance. What what is it that's kind of pushed you from being that introvert songwriter to wanting to go out and play your own music in front of people? 
Yeah, it is. It was um, it was a difficult switch. I've always, like I said, loved writing um, and loved singing and playing. But to be on stage and to be a performer um, and an entertainer is, you know, a completely different different thing. Um, a lot of people have stage fright. It's a really common fear, and I was definitely one of those people. So it took a while um, for me to get comfortable, and I think that's why I sort of put off. Um, chasing music as a career initially because it was just such a hurdle that I had to get over. Um, but my fiance really encouraged me to get on stage. So I started doing open mics around the city and then I started getting gigs um, and then I recorded and it's just been, um, I guess, getting busier and busier and it's a lot easier for me now. And actually I have a lot of fun now when I go on stage, which is amazing. So it's uh, definitely something that I needed to kind of face head on and conquer. And I feel like I'm doing that. So it's an awesome, awesome feeling to be able to share, um, you know, what I was writing in the background or what I was initially too scared, you know, cause when you get on stage, you're really putting yourself out there and songwriting to me is so personal. So that's sort of, I think what was so scary about it. Well, so we've definitely got your fiance to thank for getting a mm-hmm. uh, another quality country artist out there. Yeah. But how much has you know being able to see the direct reaction of your of your song to fans? How much has that changed the way that you write, if at all? Um, yeah. So my first album, actually called "Here to Stay," um, my writing on that album was very introspective, um, a little bit sadder, maybe closer to Ingrid Andress as an up and coming artist right now. And sort of, she does kind of like um, self-described sad piano songs and she's a fantastic artist. And that's sort of the kind of music I was writing. And I did get a lot of fan reaction from that. um, And people really related to the songs. And then I wanted to though, kind of go into making more upbeat, happy, fun, um, kind of dancey stuff, because that was something I hadn't I hadn't written before. And so this new song that I'm coming out with is more in that vein. So I'm I'm really excited to sort of so, show like all aspects of um, the songwriting process, if that makes sense. Oh, definitely. And you're right. This song that uh, that you have coming out here on April 3rd. It's called Home is Where You Are, and it really is a, a dancey kind of song. And it, it's got to be a pretty exciting time for you, not just putting out a new song that's a little bit different than what you've done before, but also a music video along with it. But let, I guess let, let's kind of take it one step at a time. Let's talk about the song itself. Uh, like I said, it's called Home is Where You Are. How did this song come about, especially because it's so different than what we've heard from you before? Right. Yeah. Um, well, I was first hit with the melody. Um, sometimes it's the, the writing comes first and I sort of write a poem and then I'll try to put music to it. Other times the music will come first and then I'll try to write lyrics that sort of match, um, you know, the vibe of the music. And so that's that was the case this time around was I got the melody stuck in my head and then I wanted to write lyrics that would fit the melody and um it was upbeat and it was fun and um I just I had just gotten engaged to my fiance actually so it sort of I think was inspired from that kind of like my home is where you are we don't need um material things or you know if we move around the country or wherever you are is where I want to be and that's where my home is was sort of the idea um, behind that. Well, and I think you captured that in this song, and we've got it here for everybody to listen to. You've also got a music video that's coming out with that, and I want to talk about that next. But first, let's let everybody take a listen to uh, to this one. It's called The Home Is Where You Are by Lauren James. Mm-hmm. I don't have China plates or welcome mat. I don't own any art to hang for guests to marvel at. And bathroom towels are not for me And pillows on sofa seats Have never been a thing I thought I'd need 
So what makes a house a home? Did you know, did you know That there's nothing in this world I'd rather do? Oh, and spend my time running around with you So take me home She don't compare to you Mama always said to me Ain't no sense of immaterial things You can't bring them to heaven when you leave So what makes a house a home? Did you know, did you know That there's nothing in this world I'd rather do All and spend my time running around is where you are by lauren james it comes out on april 3rd and lauren you're also dropping a music video at the same time this one's your first music mm-hmm. video right yes i am so excited yeah so what was it that that made you pick this song i know there's a uh, um a lot of fans out there that were hoping um for cherry pie to mm-hmm. be to be a music video but you ended up going with this one which after seeing the video, I can definitely see why you chose this one. But what was it that, that made you wait for a new song to put one out? Yeah, well, we actually are still um, in production for um, the Cherry Pie video. So that will come out um, at some point, hopefully in the next um, maybe couple of months or so. Well, now that we're all cooped inside, maybe maybe sooner than that. <laughs> but um yeah, this um, this video was just seemed, I guess, like a good choice because it is so upbeat and we really wanted to do something fun. And my fiance is actually the one that had the whole idea for the video. So down to like the the gingham costumes, um, the dancing, we wanted to hire a choreographer to sort of help us out with that and plan it. Um, and the video is actually a one shot. So there's no editing. Um, what you see is what you get. And that was a really fun aspect of it. So I, um, I'm glad we chose this one. I think it's, it's going to be a really great first music video, um, to go with. Well, and it looks like you had a ton of fun filming it, knowing that it's a one shot now. I mean, I could, Mm -hmm. you can, you can almost see that there, that it's just one giant dance party for three minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was so much fun. Um, you know, we took a took a handful of takes and, you know, we're learning the choreography. It was all done in one day. Um, and all of those people that you see in the video are actually friends of mine, which is so awesome and so fun. New York has such a great network of artists and I feel like a great community of artists who all are, um, you know, professional, whether it be actors, musicians, um, photographers, cinematographers. And so we have a great network there. And we had everybody come together and sort of help out on this video. 
And so it was just a ton of fun to make and it turned out great. So I'm, I'm really happy with the end product. Well, and as an artist, how do you decide that it's time to put out a music video? I mean, obviously there, there's quite an expense to do it, but it's also a great marketing tool. I mean, what was it that at this point in your career, you're like, okay, it's time to, to start putting out a couple of music videos. Yeah, well, I had, um, you know, come out with the EP a couple of years ago, Here to Stay. Um, And then we wanted to just come out with this Home is Where You Are as a single. And we thought it would be a neat idea to have the single and a music video come out at the same time. Um, It just felt like it was time in the career to sort of have a visual come along now um, with a song. So we just wanted to, I guess, have that double package available for people to see. And, you know, if you've heard my music, maybe you don't um, really know who I am. But when you see this video, I feel like you get a a better idea of my vibe and kind of my whole message and um, what it is I stand for and what it is that I want to put out into the world as an artist. Well, and you've gotten some great marks on your EP that you put out in 2018 i i can assume or i guess guess that you're going to get similar um you know critical success with this song just having heard it and having uh seen the music video but what's that mean for you when you're out there and obviously when fans love your music it's one thing but how much different is it when you get that critical success um you know when you put something out like that Mm -hmm. yeah it's um it's very, it's very validating, I guess. Um, I am always, you know, happy with what I put out. There's so much work that goes behind it. Um, you know, and it's, it's not all just, you know, live performances and writing and there's a lot of press that goes into it and, you know, sitting at your computer for hours, sending out emails, you know, for hours, trying to get people to listen to your stuff. And as, especially as a new artist, that's, um, a little difficult sometimes, you know, you're the, you're the artist, you're the PR person, you're the tour manager, you know, when you're just starting out. Um, so when you do get that feedback, um, that comes back and someone really took the time, you know, to listen to your stuff and loved it, that's always such a nice, um, such a nice thing to happen and really kind of makes you feel good, you know, about what you're putting out there. Uh, Definitely. I can definitely see that. And where can people, keep up with what you have going on and, you know, look for those, the future music videos that you've got going on and the one that comes out on uh, April 3rd. Yeah. So I am on Instagram um, and Facebook and it would be uh, Lauren James music. James is spelled J A I M E S. Um, So everything is up to date on there. And when this uh, all drops on April 3rd, it'll be available on all platforms. And if anyone wants to go and pre-save the song, um, you can go to my Instagram, and the link is in the bio there. And then we'll also put that in the uh, in the bio of or the description of this podcast, so they can click there. They'll also have a a link directly to the Instagram, um, so they can mm-hmm. follow you there also because I think that's important. But here's a question that I haven't gotten to ask anybody, uh, an artist, throughout this whole coronavirus uh, stuff: mm-hmm. What can fans do to help support you in a time like this obviously streaming the music is one thing but you don't make Mm -hmm. a whole lot off of the streams what what can fans do to help out artists in this time right so um the best thing is we obviously have a lot of artists i'm sure people have seen on instagram trying to do these live shows a lot of them are having the option of tipping which is very cool so you can send you know how you would normally buy a concert ticket, maybe if you want to donate to your artist who is not able to get money from touring at this time. Um, a lot of artists have set up Venmo and PayPal for that if you want to go check out their live concerts. Um, and then the other thing that people can do definitely is buy merch, buy CDs, um, you know, buy song downloads, that sort of thing, because that goes right into your artist's pocket. And so that really helps them out during this time of not being able to go on the road um, and have live shows. Well, there you have it. And Lauren, thank you so much for jumping on here with us. We end every show the same way. It's called The Final Four. It's probably the four toughest questions that I'm going to ask you this whole time, mostly because they just make you think, okay? hmm Okay, so we'll start with this one. If you could go on tour with anybody, alive or dead, 
who would it be? Ooh, that is difficult. <laughs> um, so alive Casey Musgraves. I absolutely love her. That's a good um, pick. Yeah. Dead. I would do, um, Johnny, Johnny cash. I think. Oh, that's a good, those are two. Mm -hmm. That would be a, a, a great concert. I think get all three of I you guys on the bill. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How about this one? Where were you and who were you with the first time you heard your music being played by somebody other than yourself that you didn't play it? Oh, actually, so I was in um, Kentucky, Paducah, Kentucky, visiting family over the winter break a couple years ago. And my aunt, for whatever reason, had gone on YouTube to see, um, you know, kind of YouTube my name and just check things out, I guess. And she came across a video of a woman who had choreographed an entire line dance to my song, Worn Out Memory, from my last EP. Um, and that was kind of unreal. It was this whole group of people in a, in a dance studio learning a line dance to my song. And I, I just was blown away by that. I thought that was so wild. That's all, And you had no idea? No, I had no idea. Well, that's so awesome. That's, those are um, cool things yeah. to come across on the internet. Yeah, it was very cool. My aunt was like, check this out. Did you see this? Have you seen this? And I was like, no. Um, and it was such a cool thing to watch. Okay, how about this one? What is your favorite venue that you've ever played at? So my favorite venue I ever played at was the Triad Theater, which is in New York City on the Upper West Side. Um, it's really a beautiful, beautiful theater. It's very intimate space. Um, the acoustics are fantastic and they've had a lot of, um, legendary names come through there. So I was really stoked to be able to play at that theater. Um, like air, air supply. I'm not sure if you've heard of them. Mm -hmm. They're one of my, my favorite. Um, I listened to a lot of sixties, seventies, early eighties. That's my favorite, uh, kind of music. And so they had played there and I was just like freaking out, you know, when I found out I got to play. So I thought that was a really cool thing. That's those ones I feel like are always the best. And that might tie into this next question, which is what is your favorite on stage memory? Hmm. Oh, I think, well, I guess uh, it might be considered on stage. I was about to go on stage um, at a show and it was my birthday. It was a birthday show. And I heard a voice behind me say, is this where Lauren James is playing? Is this the Lauren James show? And I turned around and it was my dad had come to see me all the way from Florida. And it was a total surprise. He'd come all the way to New York City to come and watch me perform. And he'd never seen me perform before. And so he got to sit and watch me go through all my songs. And it was it was such a great experience since he's such a huge reason why um, I grew up musically and have this love for music in the first place so that was an awesome experience that's awesome had he heard you play like in your room or at home before it or was this the first right. time he had ever heard it yeah he'd heard me play in my room before but never had seen me um perform on stage at a show so that was a really special moment for me which is definitely a little bit different than than playing in your room by yourself I'm yeah sure. definitely <laughs> Well, Lauren, thank you so much for jumping on here. Everybody, go out there, get her brand new song, uh, Home is Where You Are, when it comes out on April 3rd. And Lauren, thank you so much for jumping on here with us. Yes, thank you so much for having me. Uh, absolutely. And that was another episode of the Tea Party Podcast. It's the country music podcast where you find new friends and new music like Lauren James and Home is Where You Are. Mm -hmm.